This used to be called the Hotel Earl, and if that name sounds familiar, it could be because that's the hotel that provides the setting in the Coen Brothers movie Barton Fink. It's called the Washington Square Hotel now, and it's in much better shape than it was in 1961. When Dylan arrived in New York, one of the first things he did was take a bus over to New Jersey. He wanted to visit Woody Guthrie, who was hospitalized with what we now call Huntington's disease. And it was at the hospital that Dylan met Ramblin' Jack Elliott, and Elliott was staying at the Hotel Earl, so Dylan decided that he would stay there too. Ramblin' Jack was living in room 312, and Peter Lafarge, the son of a Pulitzer Prize-winning novelist and the songwriter behind The Ballad of Ira Hayes, lived in room 306. Dylan's most associated with room 305, and when Dylan and Joan Baez began their relationship, they stayed at the Earl, and her song Diamonds and Rust refers to the place, for better or for worse, as that crummy hotel by Washington Square. Even without Bob Dylan, the Washington Square Hotel is probably second only to the Chelsea in terms of rock and roll history in New York. We still get a lot of musicians staying here. Right. But they're in a different they're at a different level. Yes. So did we stay here until he passed away, you know, whenever he right. was in New York. Right. Stay anyway here. had his in his notes. Okay. And Roger McGuin came back a few years ago, remember which room he stayed in. I think one of the reasons why it was easy for most of the rock musicians to be here is because of the uh, studio, mm. the electric lady over there. there. So Dylan recorded there, Bowie and so many people, mm -hmm. so all of them took time coming in and out of this place. John Phillips wrote California Dreamin' in this hotel, and not too long ago, Nora Jones used to work at the adjoining North Square restaurant, even singing at the Sunday brunch for a month or so before she moved on. At the northernmost end of McDougal, a block north of Washington Square Park, used to be the 8th Street Bookshop. And from 1947 to 1979, it was run by a man by the name of Eli Willens. Now later on, Eli's son, Sean, became a famous historian. He wrote The Rise of American Democracy, The Age of Reagan, and also a book called Dylan in America. Now Susie Rotolo used the 8th Street Bookshop as a kind of library. She went there, sat on the floor, and read Henry Miller and Anais Nin. But the main reason that the 8th Street Bookshop is important to Dylan fans is that this is the place where Allen Ginsberg and Bob Dylan first met.